Emperor set out from Roma ten months ago. I did so with a single purpose. To discover what our father did not. In a letter written the year before my birth, he makes mention of a library hidden beneath the stones of Masyaf Castle. A sanctum full of invaluable wisdom. So what will I find when I arrive there? Who will greet me? Hey everyone, it's Amanda. The story of Ezio Auditore has been a long one indeed, but it's finally coming to an end in Assassin's Creed Revelations for the Xbox 360. Today, I have more questions than answers. This is why I've come so far, to find clarity. The story lets you get a little bit of a fill-in on kind of what happened at the end of Brotherhood for those of you who haven't played it, but also leaves you stranded in the Animus. Desmond's mind is falling apart, and he must complete all these memories of his ancestors to possibly make it out and be himself again. This last memory is that of a later Ezio, who has one final journey awaiting him. Hello? This game is just as stunning as the ones before it. The architecture is beautiful and the cutscenes and even in-game graphics look perfect, as well as the lighting in every scene. Ezio begins this journey escaping a nearly close fate from the Templars and eventually meeting up with a new group of assassins who even have some tricks to show the master himself. One of these important new assassins is a friend named Yusuf. Yusuf gives you what is probably the most important new element as far as movement goes in the game called your hook blade. This hook blade allows you as the player to expand on Ezio's parkour style movements and now you may use it to climb buildings much quicker and reach higher, but also it's a zip line. The zip lining feature allows you to assassinate somebody if they're below you, which I find fascinating because it's a very quick assassination when you do this. You can also do moves with this. It allows you to do a hook and throw where you pull yourself over an enemy and toss them down with this blade. And really, minus the hook blade being part of your arsenal, nothing too much has really changed in your combat from the structure Brotherhood set up for play. Another new thing we gain from this time era is the ability to craft bombs. There are multiple types of bombs you'll get to see as you progress, but the first ones you see are that of cherry bombs, which simply distract guards by making a loud noise. There are tons of others you'll be able to concoct later on with the supplies that you loot from the guards you're killing throughout play, so make sure you loot every guard you see. Now the city that this takes place in is that of a 16th century Constantinople. This is where you put on your thinking caps and remember all that you should have learned back in high school in social studies. I always feel that the staff at Ubisoft truly use their diversity, with there being multiple locations working on these games, to really get the culture from different standpoints to make this game as accurate as they possibly can. One more feature that I feel separates this game from its previous ones is that of Ezio being more of a leader. Or you at least feel he's a leader as you control him recruiting assassins. It's spectacular, along with the ability to control your group when facing invasions. For example, Ezio is able to build barricades, place gunmen, or guys with bows on rooftops, as well as many other features for those segments in this game. The only real downside to Revelations is that it really has a lot to live up to considering how good all the previous Assassin's Creed's have been, and on top of that, needs to be just as epic and more because it's the last in the storyline for Ezio. If you're somebody though interested in the competitive multiplayer in this series, stay tuned for the second part of this review, where I actually tell you if the multiplayer was able to outdo that in Brotherhoods or not.